my name is Shachi and welcome back to my channel. So I am a travel and a visa coach and on this channel you would have seen videos on the US visa process, how to prepare for the interview and also how to clear it. First of all, thank you so much for the overwhelming response on that video series. I am so happy and so grateful that it has managed to reach and help so many of you. If you still haven't checked it out, then click on the link above and make sure that you watch it after this video. Also, if you want to book a one-to-one -one consultation session with me for a more personalized coaching, you can do that as well by clicking on the link which is mentioned right in the screen right now and also mentioned in the description box below. This video is going to be a year 2020 updated video about the US visa process, in particular for the B1, B2 visa category. Now, there are a lot of questions which get asked uh, commonly in the YouTube comment section and also in my Instagram DM. And I feel that some of these questions are actually critical and they are actually sort of the deciding factor whether uh, your visa gets cleared or not. So in this video, I've picked not only the commonly asked ones, but also the crucial ones and I'm going to answer some of them. Let's get started. So the first question is, how soon can I apply again if my visa is rejected? So officially, you can apply after three working days. That means that if your visa gets rejected today, you can apply for the next interview slot after three working days. Of course, this is subject to availability of the interview slot in the center that you have chosen. Now, there is a misconception that you need to wait for a significant period of time before you apply again, like three, like six months, nine months, sometimes even a year. But this is not true at all. If you are confident about your application and you feel that you are well prepared for the interview, you can apply immediately. You do not have to wait for anything. On the other hand, if you feel that you know you need a little bit more time to figure out your mistakes, to correct them and to prepare better for the interview, then feel free to take a gap of about 15 days or even a month and then apply again. By the way, if you want to understand why your application was rejected and what could be the possible reasons, then I have a separate video on that. I'm going to leave the link for that above. Make sure that you check it out. So the next question is, can I change information in my DS-160 when I apply for the second time? Again, this is for people whose visa has got rejected earlier and they're applying for their second or sometimes even for the third time. Now you need to understand that DS-160 is an extremely important document because this is a document that the visa officer or the MC officer is going to have in front of him or her when you appear for the interview. So the information that you put in in your DS-160 not only needs to be accurate, but it also has to be consistent, which means that you essentially cannot make any material changes or any significant changes in your DS-160 unless those changes have truly happened. So the information you fill in your DS-160, whether it is for the second time or whether for the third time, should remain consistent from the beginning because of course they're going to have copies of all your previous DS-160 as well. So one example for this and which I see very commonly is people change their salary, their monthly salary or their monthly income from their first DS-160 to the other. Now, if this change has truly happened and you have the supporting document for it, it's completely fine. If not, you need to maintain that consistency. The second area where I see this mistake made very commonly is name of the contact person in the US. So if your first DS-160, you have mentioned that you have a relative in the US and you have given their name and contact number, then the same information needs to be maintained in your consequent DS-160s as well, unless there has been some change. So in short, you cannot really make much changes in your DS-160 unless the change has truly happened and you have the supporting document for that. If you want me to proofread and review and check your DS-160 before you hit that submit button, then feel free to book a consultation session with me. You know that the link is in the description box below. I also have a video which talks about the five common mistakes that people make in DS-160 and how you can avoid it. Make sure that you check out that video. I'm going to leave the link for that above. The next question is, is there any particular number that I need to show in my bank account or is there any particular balance that I need to have in my bank account? Now, this question is more relevant for people who are going for self-funded visas or whose trips are going to be self-sponsored. And the answer is that no, there is no particular number or there's no universal number which is applicable for everybody and you know, which guarantees a US visa. There's a very common misconception that you need 10 lakh rupees of balance in your bank account to ensure that you get a US visa. This is just, uh, you know, misinformation. It's not correct at all. 
The amount of bank balance required actually varies with each person. It depends upon your profile, it depends upon the purpose of visit, on the duration of your trip, on the people who are traveling with you and so many other factors. So it obviously varies with each person and it's really important to understand what is the correct bank balance that is applicable for you. So I actually have a separate video which talks about this uh, question in depth and which helps you calculate what is the funding that you should be showing in your bank account. So I'm going to leave the link for that above. Make sure that you check it out. The next question is, how do I justify my purpose of visit? Now this is a very common problem for people who apply for the B1 visa category. B1 visas are basically visas which are work visas. So here you would normally go from your company for a short project, for a conference or for a business meeting. And here a lot of times, even though the purpose is valid, the visa gets rejected because the purpose was not communicated clearly. So if you fall under the B1 visa category, then make sure that you prepare for this purpose of visit thoroughly. You need to ensure that the importance of your work is communicated. It is important that the embassy officer understands that you need to be physically present there to do the work. And the work is not something which can be you know, done or a video call or even over an email. It is also important to make sure that it doesn't sound too technical or too complicated uh, which might result in you know the essence of the purpose itself getting lost. So I have worked with people from MNCs who uh, travel to US in the B1 visa category and I help them define their purpose and also communicate it more clearly. So if you fall under this category and you're facing a similar issue then you can book a one-to-one -one consultation session with me. You know where to find the link for that. So moving ahead the next question is I am not comfortable in English, what do I do? So a lot of you have messaged me saying that you are not comfortable giving the interview in English and what are the options? The US visa process actually gives you an option to hire a translator. So if you are not comfortable in English and you would like to communicate in Hindi, you can hire a Hindi to English translator uh, who will be present with you during the interview. This has to be booked well in advance so keep that in mind. Coming to the impact of this on the interview, there is no direct uh, relation whether hiring a translator will you know, impact your interview in a positive or a negative manner. It's not, that is not true. It again depends on the rest of your profile, your purpose of visit and everything else. But end of the day, be prepared to answer this question that if you cannot communicate in English, how will you manage in the USA and how do you plan to travel to the USA? Which means that if you English not uh, bol pate hai or English mein comfortable in English, so how will you manage in the USA and how will you communicate in the USA and how will you manage in the USA? So let me take one last question and this one is what do we do if we do not have any travel history? Now obviously travel history is something which is beneficial and it definitely helps your profile especially if you are applying for the tourist visa that is the B2 category. But it's not like people who do not have travel history do not get their visas approved. There are people who do not have any travel history and they still get their US visa. So, what I would want to say is that if you do not have a travel history, if you haven't traveled out earlier, there is no point worrying about it. Instead, focus on the rest of your profile. In particular, focus on your ties to the home country and what are your reasons to come back to India. This needs to be very strong. You need to have really strong reasons and really strong factors which show that you will come back to India and you have enough ties in your home country. Many times this becomes the deciding factor between whether the visa gets approved or rejected. So guys, there are more questions, but I don't want to include them in this video. Otherwise, this is going to become way too long. So I will do a part two of this FAQ video and, uh, you know, get the rest of the questions in there. In the meanwhile, if there's something that you would like to ask, something which is bothering you and troubling you, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. You can also reach out to me via Instagram DM. My handle is right below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss out the part 2 of this video and all the other videos which I'm going to be filming on the US visa process. In the meanwhile, if you feel that you need a more personalized approach and a more one-to-one -one, uh, coaching to help you get through this US visa journey, feel free to reach out to me. You can reach out to me via Instagram, through my website or you can also directly book a session with me. The links for all of this is going to be in the description box below. So I guess that's all for this video. Wishing you all a very happy 2020 and all the very best for the US visa process. I'll see you in the next one. Signing off for now. Bye.